Hey guys, Poigie here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about crew points at an intermediate level. So at this point you have watched the beginner video, you figured out that whenever your number here for your crew points turns gold, you're going to go ahead and distribute those points. You're not moving down the tech tree so fast that everybody else has better crews than you do. And you're only using your crew points on the types of vehicles you intend to use in that crew slot. Now it's time to talk about experting crews. All right, so why is experting a crew important? So we're taking a look at the M8 right now with no crew points distributed, and let's take a look at how we're doing um, based on that. So keen vision, line of sight detections 1,800 feet away, line of sight identifications 1,400 feet, and aircraft detection we start to see them when they're 4.3 kilometers away. Field repair takes about 36 seconds, Agility, ability to replace a crew member takes 13 seconds. And from a driving standpoint, it takes us a full second for our driver to shift gears. On the gunner side, our targeting, relatively slow, 4.2 degrees per second and 2.8 on the vertical. For our weapon reload, it takes 4.3 seconds. On our artillery, we're accurate within 192 feet of where we call a strike. It takes 13 seconds for that strike to come in. And the reception range is 1,640 feet. So that's where the enemy players detected by the allied team are displayed. So if your buddy can see them on the map, you can see them as long as you're within 1,600 feet. So now let's go in. So when you want to expert a crew, you're going to go into qualification. You're going to see this option, upgrade qualification to expert. In this case, because it's a low BR, it's only going to cost us 2,100 silver lions. But no matter what the cost, it's essentially going to pay for itself. You're going to do better in the game. You're going to earn more silver lions. So it's absolutely worth it every time. So let's upgrade the M8 uh, qualification expert and see what a difference it makes for us. All right, so now we've done that going back to the driver. So now line of sight detections up 677 feet. So now we can see things that are 2,500 feet away. The line of sight identifications up 500 feet. We now see them when they're 1,900 feet away. And the aircraft detection went from 4.3 to 5.8 kilometers. So you're gonna see them much sooner. Field repair time got knocked down by five seconds to 30 seconds. Uh, no longer takes us 13 seconds to replace a crew member. That's down 1.5, so it's 11.5 seconds. And our driver now can shift within 0.73 seconds rather than a full second. Our gunner targeting is better by about half a degree per second on the horizontal and about a third of a degree per second on the vertical. Our weapon reload time has gone from 4.3 seconds to 4 seconds. And our artillery targeting accuracy is a little bit better. It's down 180 feet instead of 192. Calling time is knocked down by almost a full second to 12. And now when our team members can see an enemy, we only have to be within 2,100 feet instead of 1,600 feet to be able to notice them on the map as well. So these might seem like small increments, but honestly, for the cost of it, it's absolutely worth it. It's going to make you do all those things faster and just do better in the game. So whenever you get a chance, absolutely, you're going to want to expert your vehicles. All right, so we're going to take a look at the M41A1 here. So we're at 6.0. We would need 30 crew level in order to go ahead and pay to expert that crew. We can't do it yet. So the best way to make sure that you can get your crews experted is to basically not put a bunch of your crew points into one area. So a lot of people are going to say, man, I, you know, all I care about is being able to reload faster. You know, if I can reload faster, I'm going to do better than everybody. Absolutely. But by putting all those points there, as you go higher and higher here, they cost more and more. So what you want to do instead, and what I do is basically go starting at the first tab go ahead and increase or you distribute your crew points towards any that are lower than 25. once you've done that across the board here go back and do that for everything that's under 50. and then once you do that go ahead and do it for everything under 75 then 100 etc 
what that's going to allow you to do is have as many crew points as possible for the lowest cost in RP. That's going to allow you to go in and expert all the crews as best as you can and be successful in the game. All right, last thing at the intermediate level is let's take a look at some of the places we can distribute our crew points. We know that we want to distribute them evenly, but let's see what they do for us. So we're going to break this down into a few types. So some are going to be how far away we can see things. That's keen vision. This is how quickly we repair. We're on ground vehicles right now. And agility and vitality are basically how quickly your crew member can move from one seat to another if somebody gets taken out. Vitality is a factor of how much that crew member can survive. Tank driving, pretty straightforward. You're gonna have better drivers gonna be able to brake faster and shift faster. On the gunner side, you've got targeting. So how, where, how well are they able to target? Um, how well are they able to range find? Tank commander, so talking about leadership real quick. So leadership basically improves all your other skills. So similar to what we did with expert and crews that helped us across the board, leadership's gonna help you across the board. Tank loader's important for the weapon reload time. Obviously, if you can knock that down, I mean, essentially two tanks in front of each other um, with everything the same except for crew points, the one who can reload faster is typically gonna win. And on the radio operator, again, just artillery that we care about and radio communications really important because that's when you can see people on the map that you wouldn't see otherwise. Aside from that, repair speed and repair rank. Um, the way this works is your repair speed is only effective as long as you are in a vehicle that you have the repair rank for. So right now we can only repair rank one vehicles faster. If we put a rank two vehicle in, it loses the ability to repair faster because we haven't qualified for that yet. In terms of air vehicles, some of this is going to be the same. Essentially, vision and awareness or how soon you can see people. Now you've got G tolerance, which affects your ability to withstand Gs, positive and negative. Stamina and vitality are two things, really survivability for the most part. Stamina is if you do exert a lot of G-forces on your pilot, how soon can they kind of snap out of it and still be accurate with their, with their shooting? A lot of people would skip the defensive armament tab, and I have in the past. But remember, our key here is to make sure that we have enough a high enough crew level to be able to expert our crews. So we don't want to get stuck on the pilot tab, spending 100, 200, 300 crew points to go up half a point here when we've got these available for 29 points and 40 points. So again, spread your crew points evenly so that you can expert your crews every time. All right, that's it for the intermediate level. Thank you guys for watching. Um, please like and subscribe if you felt like this helped you. And let me know if I missed anything in the comments below. Also, let me know what you want next. So focus right now is on crew points, but I'm willing to do whatever you think would help you. So just let me know in the comments below and we'll keep moving through this. Thanks, guys. Catch you on the next one.